Whoa! I'm having a vision! <laughs> a green-headed girl. She seems so real. You know, I think they're on drugs. You ever watch something that certainly goes beyond what you thought it could do? Well, Netflix's Wendell and Wilde does just that. This was a film that was highly anticipated considering the fact it was done by the great Henry Selleck of Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline fame. He's been in the cut for a minute, but came back pretty strong with this new film, considering the fact that he was working with Pixar and yeah, that kind of fell flat with the whole John Lasseter stuff, but that's neither here nor there. But it was also co-written by Jordan Peele of I mean, it's Jordan Peele. By this point, you should know by now who he is. Come on. It's certainly unexpected considering Jordan Peele is more known for live action stuff. I think this is more or less his first outing in an animated feature in terms of writing. Though, like the saying goes, Don't quote me, boy, cause I ain't said shit. But it's certainly something that did give this movie a bit more of an anticipation factor by the fact that it's like, yeah, Jordan Peele is now working in an animated medium. It's like, okay, let's see where that goes. And I think it gives us something pretty unique. Now, I was given screeners by Netflix to see the movie early, but I will say I won't go into any major spoilers. Trust me, you'll want to experience the film for yourself and see everything it has in store. So the film revolves around this cold and distant orphan girl named Kat who attends this snooty private school. She finds there's some supernatural stuff going on and ends up meeting these two demon brothers named Wendell and Wilde. She makes a deal with them to bring her parents back to life, but things go wrong when they don't hold up their end of the deal. Now it's up to Kat to make things right. I'm choosing to be very vague with that description because it doesn't even scratch the surface of this movie. There is a lot that goes into this, and definitely a lot in terms of its plot. The characters are a strong driving force for this film though. Kat is someone you can easily empathize with because of the loss of her parents, which they do show. She's a girl who got caught up in terrible circumstances and got put in the system at such a young age. So you can get how she can have such a cold demeanor, but she by no means is boring or just overly stoic. Her edginess adds a sense of personality to her that makes her stand out. Not to mention we could use some more black goth characters. Or maybe she's emo, either way. What's gonna be interesting coming out of this film is all the people who are probably going to be cosplaying as her. Let's face it, even though this film comes out a bit later towards the end of the month, it's very much going to be a race to see how many people are just gonna love dressing up as this character. She has a pretty strong and unique aesthetic to her that straight up screams this character is to be cosplayed. Like, this is for all the little black girls who just want a goth image. Like, I can easily see it happen. Wendell and Wilde are just fun goofball brothers just trying to get ahead. They're basically that lazy duo that comes up with whatever scheme they can to get out of the work they're supposed to do. They are a true delight with the fact that they're played by Key and Peele. I shouldn't have to tell you who plays which considering the obvious, but they're honestly a very fun and dynamic duo that just works perfectly considering it's Key and Peele and one of them is the one who writes their dialogue and interactions, so of course it turns out a hit. There is definitely a lot of detail to this film that works to get you wrapped up in just about every aspect of it. It's no mystery that Henry Selleck wants to get you enthralled in the world he creates. There's just so much personality that oozes from this podunk town that Kat has to live in. Even though it looks very dank and dirty, it has a lot that makes it enjoyable to be in. Just all these intricate details that you're just trying to look at. And it gives plenty of good reasons for this film to be rewatched just so you can notice all the different details that you might have missed on the first watch. The biggest thing that contributes to this is the fact that the film is stop motion. There's such masterful detailing in the environments and sets, it's just so elaborate in the designs and animations that you could get lost in how well it's done. It's just really intricately detailed that you're just always looking at every aspect that you can find in the backgrounds. They even do that very appreciated thing of going a bit behind the scenes to show you how they did certain shots. It's just a pure chef's kiss to the craft of stop motion. It really feels like it was sort of a passion project for Selleck to be able to make this film. Even the way the characters moves has a great feeling of personality. From Wendell's more timid demeanor to Wilde's more lumbering movements, you get a sense of the character's personality just from their basic movements. This extends to just about everyone, from the side characters and the main characters. You get a great feeling of everyone right down to their designs to their movements. What works great with this is there's a good sense of subversion with the side characters as well. Certain characters are not exactly what you'd expect them to be, which helps keep 
keep you on your toes for the film. What I kind of found interesting in terms of the designs of the characters is how much they do try to go out of their way to make them look like their actors. You know, you got the Jordan Peele character Wilde, who looks exactly like Jordan Peele. You get Keegan-Michael Key's character Wendell looking a bit more like him. It kind of just is nice to see that they're able to integrate the celebrities as the characters in this medium. And it's nowhere near distracting either. You very much can get into the characters even though you're looking at a caricature of the actors. It still manages to work to that level. What I was surprised to find out about this film is that it's based on a book that Henry Selleck wrote. Now, of course, I haven't read it, so I'm not exactly sure in terms of whether or not it's accurate. I would think it is, considering, you know, he wrote the book. I'm honestly happy to see that he's able to make the film the way he wants it, especially with this being a PG-13 film. Yeah, it pretty much works a bit like Coraline if it never had to censor itself that much. They make it clear with the use of death and demons that this isn't your average kids movie. It works in the sense of making it clear that this medium can be used beyond just a kids film. And that's also how I think they managed to have Jordan Peele on board for writing this as well. Now, of course, with this being co-written by Peele, there's obviously going to be some social commentary. I can't tell you what it is, but it does stem from a major issue many black groups have been fighting against for a while. It's done in a way that's able to affect any audience that watches it. Like, you can easily put two and two together to realize, oh, this is a real world thing that is actually affecting people in a very negative sense. It's honestly well executed. I honestly found myself thinking, yep, that is how you should tell the story properly. That works perfectly. Now, of course, I do gotta mention that there is a bit of shortcomings for this movie. There is a lot of plot and exposition that they really hammer in on this film. There's honestly multiple plots going on that I can't fully get into, but it straight up feels like a bit much as you're watching. You might get the feeling of, okay, it has a lot going for it, but it's still a good time, but you're still very much going to be thinking, hmm, I kind of wish we got to focus a little bit more on that particular thing. It's just something that's going to be in the back of your mind. Like, it's not bad, but you will be having that feeling like there could have been more to it. If anything, it needed to be more of a mini-series. That way it could give more time to the characters and the plot lines they were setting up. That's honestly how I felt after I watched it. Like, I had a good time, I enjoyed it, I would give it a rewatch obviously but I think I would have preferred a mini series where everything has way more time to flesh itself out and had a better sense of flow for everything it's trying to throw at you it's not overwhelming you can keep along with everything that it's going for but you are gonna feel like this feels like this could have been paced a bit more or maybe the movie could have been longer and that probably could have worked it only sits at about a good hour and 40 minutes so that's kind of the one part you're feeling like hmm if this was longer, I think I would have been more on board for all the different things it's hitting me with. It does have that feeling of wanting to avoid middling middle syndrome, which it does accomplish, but at the cost of pacing a bit. You know, you're just going to feel like, hmm, this needed to be longer. There's also something in the end that revolves a certain character not exactly getting a proper resolve. It's nothing really bad, but you'll just have a question in your head wondering about them when you see it happen. You're just going to be thinking, hmm, what exactly is going to happen with this character now? That's just something that's going to be in the back of your mind. But all in all, this is still a pretty fun movie that is a great return to form for Henry Selleck. This was honestly his first film since Coraline. That's pretty crazy when you think about it, considering the fact that Coraline was like 2009 and he came back this strong. It encapsulates you in the world and its unique look. You will have a greater appreciation for stop motion animation when you see this. The characters are engaging and you can get behind the things that ails them. The commentary catches you off guard, but it speaks a strong message that people can easily resonate with. I want to say thank you to Netflix for their early screeners. This film can be seen in select theaters on the 21st of October and on the 28th fully on Netflix. This is one film that's sure to give you a wild time. Thank you.